Well, welcome back to the Hyperdeck series. I am Keith. This is Life Journey Production Studios. If you're enjoying this series, please like and subscribe. If you're not enjoying this series, you probably have the Hyperdeck all figured out or you don't even know if you ever would get one. But if you do think about getting a Hyperdeck or you are trying to get yours integrated correctly, this is the video series for you. We're going to talk about macros. This is a second part of our animated graphics, assigning them to keys and integrating them in your HyperDeck with your ATEM control software. I wanna talk about how you can roll a graphic, a lower thirds. Right now, I have a static lower third below me and that's playing in my media pool. We'll take a look at that here in a second. But what if I wanted that animated graphic that I have and what if I wanted it to be a macro button? So let's say for instance, I'm doing a demo and I have my super source up and I wanna get ready to end my show and I just wanna roll in my graphic, let everybody see my Life Journey Productions logo, and all of that before I say goodbye, then I may want to program a macro for that. So let's talk about how to do that right now. So we cut the super source. I have my lower thirds graphic there right now, but let's say I don't want that graphic on there. So in a minute, we're going to turn it off and we're going to use one of our downstream keys like we talked about in the last video to play my other graphic from my hyperdeck, but I want it to be a macro. So let's start by creating a macro. So let's go up here to file. Next to file in the top left is macros. We're gonna click on that button and then we're gonna click on macros and it opens up this menu. So we're gonna leave it right here for right now. Um, and you can see I have a number of macros on the front of my ATEM Mini Extreme. I have six macro buttons. Mine is Extreme ISO. If you have Extreme, you're gonna have six programmable buttons. This is button one, button two, button three, button four, button five, button six. And then I have all this room for more macros and I have multiple pages. So I could have a page for different shows and they're scrolled through down here. But I wanna create a macro here. It's not gonna be one of my buttons on the front of my ATEM because they're already filled up with macros I'm using right now. So I'm gonna click on that, click on the plus arrow under the create menu. This is the run menu where I run macros. This is the create menu where I create macros. So again, click on that, click plus. I'm gonna name this Hyperdeck. Run. So we're gonna run LT, lower thirds. We're gonna hit record. So it's now recording my every move. First step I wanna do is I want to decide if I want this to be playing already or looping, it's playing, I wanna turn it off. So I just told my macro that this should be off right now when we start. So we'll come back to that in a minute. I do want it to play at the bottom of my super source. If I didn't want it to play on the bottom of my super source, I would tell it to go to one of my other inputs. But when I cut to that macro, I do want it my super source. So I'm gonna turn that off. back on again, and then I wanna turn super source off and back on again because I do wanna cut back to super source. I don't want my DVD on, I just wanna do a mix. So I'm turning that off, I'm telling the macro to have a mix on. And that's my transitions, just to make sure that I have a nice smooth transition when I hit that macro. I'm not gonna want this image that I have on the screen on now, so I'm turning that off. So what I wanna do is I wanna have downstream key play. So we're gonna go to the downstream key to show you that. Leave that on, go to palettes menu up here. If you don't have downstream keys open, they're right here and they're both listed in one long column. I don't know why they didn't do a downstream one, key one, downstream key two, like they did that, but that's the way the software is set up. I can set a time here. If I'm not gonna change the time, then I would just click in this button to tell it that's what I want but I'm gonna to go to one second here because um, I changed it in my last attempt at this video. And I'm gonna click enter. I want my Hyperdeck fill to be here, so I'm gonna change away from it and back to it. I want my Hyperdeck key here, to change away from it and back to it and make sure they're like that. Um, I don't want a mask, so I'm gonna turn that on and off again. And I do want pre-multiplied key on, so I'm gonna turn that off and on again. So now I've told my macro that my downstream key needs to have this settings. Um, I have all my other downstream keys off, but just to be safe, let's turn them off, on, on and off again. 
all the way down here, including my downstream key to on and off again. Now I just make sure they're not gonna be on already or I just want them all off when this macro plays. So there's no challenges, okay? So these settings look great. I wanna go over and look at my HyperDeck and I wanna cue my video because I want this to roll from the very beginning. So I'm gonna go into uh, my media player, back to my HyperDeck and Make sure that all these settings are ready. I have the right clip here. And if I had three clips on this disc, I would click away from it and back to it. Instead, I'm just going to click on it, hit enter again, and it transitioned to tell it to go to that clip. So now I'm on the same exact picture. It, it did a transition, which is perfectly fine. Now what I wanted to do is I want to tell it that when we go back again to this macro, I want key downstream key one on, right? I want it on. Now that means it's gonna stay on even after I cut away from this macro. So I may want to not have that on and do a transition. Then it comes on and then when I do a transition away from it, it'll go away from it. So if I transition back to super source after my macro is played, I'll be able to have that graphic go back off. So we're gonna try that, see if it works. Again, macros are something you're gonna have to experiment with. So now I want it to play and it's playing right now and I didn't want that. So I'm gonna stop it again. I'm gonna go back to cue it. It's queued on my HyperDeck. And now I want to hit play in the macro, but do I need to? Well, let's go see. Let's go down to settings menu here on the bottom left. And I have auto roll on, so I don't need to hit play. It's gonna auto roll, but it's not gonna loop. So if I want it to loop and not just go off, then I'm gonna have to tell it to play and to loop. So let's do a quick two frame pause here, up here. Um, let's go a couple frames here, add a pause, and now let's hit play loop. And let's turn the, Recording off. Now we should be set to go. So I'm going to re my um, my HyperDeck. So I'll show you that here on the screen. So here I am on this screen on the front of my HyperDeck. I moved my camera a little bit. Sorry. I have this queued. So here's what we're getting ready to play animated with our. So it's queued up, ready to go. And now when I click on this macro, which you're going to see right here on the macros. Let's go to a larger view of that. So I'm gonna go over here to macros. Let's bring it down here so it's easier to see. This is our macro. I'm gonna go into the run menu. I'm gonna hit this macro. Now when I hit play, this should change graphics, right? This should play transition and play my animated lower thirds. Let's cross our fingers. And there it went, it worked. And you can see the transition happen even on the bar. So I can cut away from this now. I should be able to do a transition away from it. So let's just do a transition away from it. And it should turn it off, it did. And now that it's off, I can cut back to my other view and show you both the HyperDeck and the um, control software in me and you can see in the screen that the HyperDeck is still playing because there isn't a macro to tell it to turn off. So it is playing. But the good news is if I cut back to our macro, which again is right here. So let me click on that macro and hit play. It should change graphics. It should relaunch the animation and there you go. So again, that's how you program a macro. It takes some experimenting to know that you can transition away from this now because of the way we set it up. We have my lower thirds back on the screen, which is a great way to end this part two of this video. So you can create macros to run your HyperDeck. You can create macros to run your videos. Um, so I have macros for my intro reels, for my live streams, and my outro reels now on my ATEM Mini. So that's it with this video. I am Keith, this is Life Journey Production Studios. I hope you'll subscribe and like these videos if they're helping you know how to better use your HyperDeck. In our last and final video, we're gonna create some graphics for the HyperDeck, motion graphics. You can also create graphics for your media pool. But if you're gonna use your HyperDeck, you need to learn how to do um, transparent graphics and learn how to 
load those into your HyperDAC and create alpha channels, or you can just create a video and render those. We'll talk about those as well and play those from your HyperDAC. So stay tuned for the final video here in our HyperDAC series, and that is how to create animated graphics with an alpha channel. See you then.